Hey everybody, welcome to another thrilling episode of Data Double Click. I'm your host, Scott Klein, and back with me in the studio is Perry. Perry, how are you? Hi, Scott. I'm awesome. Good. How are you? Good, thank you. It's, uh, we did one, I think you were the very first one we did for this show. Correct. Which was probably, I don't know how long ago. <laughs> how yeah. long ago. Uh, we've, moved to, we've moved to new digs, uh, nice. but it's always good to have you back. Uh, nice but I, you. From a cor uh, I think we're going to talk about something different today. Correct. Yep, but before we get started, well, but, uh, for those that unfortunately didn't watch your first video, shame on them. Why don't you mm -hmm. take a second and introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Perry Scuntrianos, and I'm a program manager with the SQL Server engineering team, focusing on availability and performance. Okay. So just a quick recap. Uh, our video last time was on, I think, SQL database performance. Correct. Right. Um, quite a lot of views on that one. People watch that. What are we going to be talking about today? So today I want to switch gears a little bit, Scott, and mm -hmm. talk about uh, a new feature that uh, we've been working on for the past couple of years mm -hmm. called Accelerated Database Recovery. Okay. Uh, and that is a new uh, SQL Server engine feature that greatly improves the database availability by speeding up the recovery. Ah, so is this SQL, uh, Microsoft SQL, uh, Box Product SQL Server on-premises? So this is uh, both in Azure and on-premises. Oh, both, okay. Yeah. Okay, so what we're going to talk about today can be found in both. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Well, let's just jump right in. Super. So, before I sort of uh, uh, let you know what, what the feature does, I'm going to give you a little bit of a background on the SQL Server uh, recovery process as it stands today. Okay. As well as the uh, couple of customer pain points that we have seen from customers okay. related to uh, recovery and long running transactions. Perfect. So, okay. the, the top three are recovery time is roughly proportional to the longest transaction in the system, meaning that if you're running a long-running transaction today and something happens to SQL Server, let's say unexpectedly goes down or you pull the plug, mm -hmm. SQL Server uh, needs to go into recovery mode. Right, okay. And it will take as long as the longest active transaction in the system currently. Ah, okay, yep. Uh, then, uh, as you know, rolling back large uh, batch operations like bulk insert takes a very long time. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, during a long-running transaction, the, uh, we cannot truncate the log, meaning that the log can, can grow uh, uh, until the transaction is, is completed. Right. So okay. during active transactions, we cannot go back and truncate the log. Okay, you have to wait till the transaction's done before you truncate the log. Correct. Right, okay. Uh, so as you can see here, 60% uh, of the customers that we ask, both Azure and on-prem, mm -hmm. have experienced more than one hour of database and availability. And that is related to uh, long-running recovery. And okay. that can be, you know, very impactful for some customers and their business if they cannot, uh, you know, access the database for an hour right. or more. So it's in recovery mode and they can't get to it. Exactly. Right. And okay. we've all seen those messages, you know, for... Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. yes. <laughs> so um, we decided to solve those problems okay. with Accelerate Database Recovery. But um, before, again, giving you more details, let me uh, spend one more slide uh, with an overview of how SQL Server Database Recovery works today. Okay. Uh, today, recovery has three phases. Mm -hmm. Analysis, redo, and undo, as you know. Mm -hmm. In the first phase, analysis, we determine the state of each transaction at the time SQL Server stop okay. starts. Yep. That's fairly fast uh, phase there. We didn't do a lot of optimizations okay. there. Yep. The next phase is the redo phase, where we scan the transaction log uh, to return the database to a state it was at the time SQL Server stop. And at that time, we open the database partially, meaning that you can connect to the, the database, but if you try to access rows uh, that participated in an in a aborted transaction, yep. you cannot get to it. Gotcha, okay, yeah. So that's why we say we open it partially. Partially, yeah. And then the final uh, uh, phase of recovery is called undo, mm -hmm. when, where we scan the log backwards, mm -hmm and uh, we roll back any uncommitted transaction individually. Okay, yep. And the way that, uh, uh, the reason that this takes a long time, recovery, as uh, I mentioned, is you have to go all the way back to the oldest uh, uncommitted transaction. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is how it works today. Okay. Accelerate Database Recovery now is, is uh, as I mentioned, is a new database uh, SQL Server engine feature yep. that targets those issues by completely redesigning the uh, recovery process. Ah, okay, yep. And, th and the benefits are, you know, fast and consistent database recovery, irrespective of your database size or how many transactions and their sizes were active during the crash. Yep. We provide instantaneous transaction rollback, which I'm going to show you through a demo. Okay. 
and uh, we are able uh, through um, a couple of components to go back and aggressively truncate the log, meaning right. that we keep the log under control and we don't let it go. Okay. okay. Um, what feature, what, what versions of SQL Server is this currently in? So currently we're in uh, public preview starting from October 17th in Azure, meaning that we okay. can, this is a gated public preview. Okay. So you send us an email and then we whitelist your Azure subscription. Okay. So you go in and, and uh, you use it. Mm -hmm. And currently we whitelist on the logical SQL Server uh, level, Le meaning okay. that if you have five databases, we whitelist on the server. And, and all the databases on, on that user. server. We can go. We can do it on the database level as well if, if there is a need. But currently, this is how we okay. how we do it. Um, and but what about Box? Is that is this will roll into nineteen? So it will. Uh, we're targeting one of the upcoming CTPs. Okay. For two thousand nineteen, mm -hmm. and when that happens, we'll uh, we'll be able to work with uh, on-prem on customers premise. as well. Okay. Yeah. So right now it's uh, in. Preview in Azure SQL Database. Correct. And then a future CTP for SQL Server. Correct. But cool. if you're an on-prem customer uh, and you want to try this out, please let me know. Send me an email. Or, and yeah, then yeah we'll I was going to ask that at the very yeah. end. Go on, you know, and expect a flood of requests. <laughs> All right. Cool. Awesome. All right. So with that, one more slide, and then we'll jump into demo. Awesome. Um, so again, with Accelerate Database Recovery, uh, we implemented version-based uh, recovery, mm -hmm. meaning that we keep version of, of rows as we go along. Okay. So we don't have to go back and scan the transaction log to uh, revert. Okay. The redo phase, if you remember in the last slide, will not start from uh, the oldest uncommitted transaction, but uh, from the last successful checkpoint. Okay. Uh, which will be, which is very, very fast. Yep. And lastly, the database will becomes fully available after redo. Yep. Oh, okay, after redo. After redo. Okay. I would imagine that you, you partially, the partially would, you know, partially uh, available database, that partially would be quite a, a large portion of the database, except for the transactions that we're currently. Correct. Right? So I, I, I could see this being very useful because, in, you know, unless my, my, trans, my, uh, my work was in, involved in a transaction, I can still get to the majority of the database. Correct. Right? So, Correct. Cool. So that's, yeah. That yeah, very nice. Very nice. Um, these are the four components. I'm not going to uh, go into them in a very detail, mm -hmm. but uh, just to set the context, persistent version store, think of it, Scott, as a replacement for, for the current TempDB version store. Oh, okay. So instead of mm -hmm. going to the TempDB version store for all the versions, we have implemented PVS mm -hmm. that sits under the database itself. So oh, currently, okay. yeah, TempDB version store, I, we have one for all the databases, yep. meaning that if one generates a lot of versions, uh, the rest of the databases are impacted right. as well. Okay. But separating that, we provide uh, resource isolation sure. and better management of, of, of the versioning okay. system. Cool. Then uh, S-Log is, uh, is um, uh, think of it as a very uh, uh, low volume um, in-memory log mm -hmm. where we keep non-versioned uh, operations. And yep. I'll, I'll tell you more when we get there. Okay, cool. And then there is a logical revert and cleaner is a process of going back. Uh, yeah. Every process ha has a cleaner, right? <laughs> Garbage so collection yeah, type yeah, of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So they yeah. go back and then cleans the uh, versions that uh, they're na no longer needed. Okay, awesome. So analysis. We didn't do a lot. We just uh, uh, construct that S log in the bottom. Mm -hmm. We uh, crack open the uh, logs from uh, S log uh, back because S log uh, participates in the SQL checkpoint process. Mm -hmm. Redo, as I mentioned, is broken into two phases. Redo from S log is super fast. We don't have to go all the way back. Yep. And the regular redo starts from uh, the latest checkpoint. Yep. And finally, undo uh, again using S log is almost instantaneous, which I'm going to show you in the, okay, in the, in good. the demo. Okay. Awesome. So that's all I have from slides. Sorry, guys. <laughs> a couple <laughs> more slides this time. Yeah, that, that's okay. We like demos. So switching to um, a VM here. Here I'm going to start two instances, Scott, of uh, SQL Server. Okay. W uh, in one of them, I have enabled uh, Accelerate Database Recovery. On the other one, I have not. Okay. The green one has Accelerate uh, ADR on, the red off. And while I'm starting those two instances, I'm going to issue the same bulk insert statement against both of them. Okay. So here on the first graph, you see I'm inserting you know, 300,000 
uh, rows, 315,000 rows against both of them. Green is ADR on, red is ADR off. Okay. I'll so tell you why this is okay. important. The second one is the size of the transaction log. Okay. You will see currently both in ADR on and off, the transaction log grows. Yep. But here at this point around 450 megabytes, you see the ADR on is not growing anymore. Okay. Which is the second point if you remember. Yeah. Uh, and that, uh, because we don't have to grow the log, you see the performance here on the first graph is starting now to, to pick up uh, on the idea, the yeah. insert. Okay, yep. Uh, and refresh my memory, why is that? So because we're using the persistent version store and that secondary oh, log right. stream right. yep. uh, to store all the necessary um, log records that we need, we can go back to the log and truncate the portion of the log because we're not going to be needed in anymore. Oh yeah, so at some point in time you're going, okay, I don't need those transactions anymore, so let me get oh. rid of the log. And that makes the, re the actual um, log smaller. Log smaller, yep. Um, and the recovery faster. Exactly, because I don't have to go and process right. that um, uh, you know, transaction log, create compensation records, as you know. It's and part of the, cl the cleanup scenario, isn't it? Exactly. Okay, yeah. all right, cool. So what this demo will do, uh, we'll give it a minute or so. Mm -hmm. It will reach three million rows. You see with the ADR on, it has already reached that limit. Mm -hmm. And now the other one, automatically those two instances will be crushed recovered, meaning think of it as, you know, pulling the plug. Okay. And now if I go here and uh, restart those uh, instances, mm -hmm. it will uh, go into the recovery mode. The resolution is a little bit funky. So here you will see both of them going into recovery. Mm -hmm. The one on the left with ADR on has already completed in five seconds. Come in. <laughs> Holy cow. And then uh, this guy, this is an estimated. It will be finished uh, much, much faster than that. Right. But uh, it's still working. And if I open, you know, the uh, error log, you see, this is the famous sort of yeah. uh, message. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the other one, if I switch to this one, you see... Uh, recovery is running checkpoint database. Yep. Recovery complete. Okay, yeah. Five seconds. <laughs> oh, man. So here, think of... Um, and we only inserted three million rows. Yeah. Think of a scenario where I'm doing a, a large... Oh, and this gig, 45 seconds. 45 seconds, okay. For this specific demo, okay, five seconds, 45 seconds is not a huge deal, yes. but if you sort of... Uh, have much more than three million exactly. rows. Exactly. So the transaction that takes, you know, five, six hours, yeah. then there are chances that you will run into long-running recovery. Yeah. Wow. So that addresses that. Um, uh, so t two of the benefits, if you remember, was aggressive log truncation. Yep. You see, during this demo, we reached 1.7 gigs of log when ADR was off. Yep. And 450 megabytes when ADR was on. Because of that capability yeah. of going back and aggressively truncating the the portion of the log that we don't need anymore. Right, okay. Yeah. So there's. Yeah. So uh, as I understand this, just mm. as we're you know as, as it's going and working and it's looking at tra the transaction log. Uh, these have already been committed. I don't need to basically keep these in the transaction log anymore, exactly. essentially, and I can get rid of those, which makes the recovery time faster. All right. And then like yeah, essentially makes uh, you know going from 45 seconds to five seconds in a yeah. recovery. Uh, and then one uh, last thing that I want to show you, mm -hmm. if you remember the instantaneous transaction rollback. Mm -hmm. So we saw the, the case of the crash recovery, meaning I have a long running transaction, something happens to it, I have to recover. But uh, with this second portion of the demo, I'll show you running um, a command like the same bulk insert mm -hmm. and then stopping it. Yep. Okay, cool. So let me connect here real quick because we had to restart the servers. I have to... Uh, reconnect. These are my two instances here. And then I'll switch to uh, my DB. Of course, uh, you know, the, the databases and configuration is exactly the same between mm -hmm. those two instances. So if I execute that and then execute that as well, let me connect to the second one. So the session above has ADR off. The second below, uh, the the session below has ADR on. Okay. So we're gonna let it run for a little bit. Okay. And then we're gonna kill them. Okay. Which simulates sort of like a manual rollback of a transaction. Sure. Okay. An example would be, okay, I want to update this uh, huge table. You know, give a um, 
you know, new value to all those columns, and then two hours into it, I want to change my mind. Sure, okay, yeah. so okay. So this is sort of the third benefit with uh, that persistent version store and nest log, you know, uh, provide instantaneous transaction rollback. Uh, so I'm going to ask a potentially dangerous question, and hopefully it's not too dangerous, because yeah. uh, I'm good. I'm good at that. <laughs> uh, I mean, what kind of time? And just ballpark, right? Because we're yeah. not going to hold anybody, uh, right? But like, let's say. Like in this case, we had three million rows. We went from forty-five seconds to five. But mm -hmm. you know, what have you seen in kind of a real-world scenario? Kind of what kind of improvements have you seen, if any? I Meaning, has it gone from like like you said, five or six hours? Has it gone from five six hours or thirty minutes? Or so uh, with uh, accelerated database recovery. I mean, the undo is instantaneous. Meaning that uh, that time that you saw in the graph will be sort of okay. eliminated. So. Right. I don't have hard numbers to share with you, okay. but uh, we've seen customers going from you know many hours to seconds, minutes. Oh, really? Yes. Oh man. Um, okay. And if you remember, this is independent of you know your database size or how many transactions do you run. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that's true because it's it's your transaction log size. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and this is more prominent in CloudScat because uh, as a DBA, you don't have full control of all the knobs in the cloud. On yeah, prem, you can point. try a couple of things. You can. Uh, you know, start to mitigate some of the things, but in cloud, those problems. Uh, are uh, that's a good point because I have less control over the transaction log in the cloud. You have, yeah, almost zero. Control, yeah, yeah, right. And so this, yeah, I could see this being very, very useful yeah. in the. Right. Okay. So let me, yeah, going back to this real quick. Let me stop the first one and then stop the second one. You see, this is done. Dang. And then this now will go again into the undo phase, meaning that I have to go back to the transaction log create you know the uh, compensation mm -hmm. uh, log records and then finally recover it's still fast don't get me wrong right, I mean, right. uh, but uh, this i think uh, adr really really improves yeah. uh, th those those scenarios well yeah as a developer you know I, I you know and we're running long running transactions i remember you know you click stop and then you have to wait for a while for it exactly. to complete right and that's like oh i'm done already exactly. right i think there's going to be a paradigm shift where you know they they're used to clicking stop, getting up to go get some coffee, and they go, oh, shoot, it's done. Yeah, yeah. I forgot, <laughs> ADR's enabled. <laughs> right. I mean, uh, the, um, the cleanup yeah. of uh, those rows need to happen, but it happens asynchro asynchronously. The cleaner yep. wakes up and then uh, cleans the raw versions okay. that are not uh, needed. Very nice, very nice. What sort of, what sort of drove, I'm, I'm sure it's a lot of feedback from customers, mm -hmm. but what sort of drove this this feature or the, you know these 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 enhancements. So um, again, primarily was customer feedback, yep. and then w as you know, we have a lot of telemetry yeah. uh, internally here. So we see all those cases, especially in Azure, with uh, you know long-running recoveries. Yeah. Customers do not have a lot of control; they just have to you know wait for the system to to recover. Yeah. Okay. So primarily is uh, customer feedback. Yeah, but I but I think that's a good point. I, I think we have a tendency to not, or, or th how do I say this, think about or not pay attention enough, and I don't say you guys, but you know, we don't put enough value on the, um, the information found in the telemetry. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, where, I, I, I'm not saying you guys, I think us, right? Because you, know, you guys are just gathering, Microsoft's gathering a ton of telemetry information, and I don't think we have enough you know, we don't put enough value outside as to what the data that you guys are gathering for telemetry and what your what your the insights you're gaining from the telemetry data. Exactly. Right. So you know, in a system like um, Azure SQL Server, which is a, a PaaS, all of those things yeah. uh, we take care of yeah, the yeah. customer. So we always go back to telemetry and make sure you know that everything works smoothly. Yep. Customers are using the features. So right. So it's okay. Cool. Awesome, man, Perry. Thank you so much. This is you, this Scott. is this is very good. I just you know this <laughs> I, I, every DBA that's watching this should go sign me up, <laughs> right? Yep. Sign me up right now. I don't care what you have to whitelist. <laughs> sign me up right now, right? Because I'm sure there's going to be information like oh man, because I'm sure you're going to want feedback and they're going to want to start playing with it, right? Absolutely. So, so yeah, let us know. Okay. Uh, all right, we'll put any links or any information down in the description of the show, and you know we'll go from there. Super. Awesome. Perry, thank you so much for coming. You, it's always a pleasure to have you. We look forward to having you back for more awesomeness <laughs> in the future. Super. Uh, everybody, thanks for watching. This is very fantastic. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.